Hello, cookbook friends. Welcome to the Cookbook Divas podcast, where we help you find your next favorite cookbook, new or vintage. My name is Carrie, and I'm here with my co-host, Katie, and we are cookbook addicts. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's mini-sode. Pride is the entire month of June, so we wanted to shine the light on eight LGBTQ celebrity chefs and showcase some of their latest cookbooks. Who is the first chef that you want to talk about today, Carrie? I, being a vegetarian, want to celebrate Yotam Odalenghi. He's an Israeli-born British chef, restaurateur, and a food writer, and writes lots of vegetarian recipes. I actually don't know if he is a vegetarian, but anyway... Along with Sammy Tamimi, he's the co-owner of six delis and restaurants in London, none of which I've ever been to, sadly. Unfortunately. (laughs) And he's also the author of several best-selling cookbooks, many of which are sitting on my cookbook shelves. Yes, yes. So I wanted to chat about Otto Lenghi Flavor, a cookbook. It came out in October 2020, just in time for the busy holiday cooking season. Although during the pandemic, I did not throw big holiday parties. I sat home on Zoom and Facebook rooms. But anyway, I can still enjoy flipping through the cookbook. It's award-winning. I saw it on so much. It was all over Foodstagram and Cookbookstagram. And everyone was like, ah, this cookbook is so good. Yeah. And I bought myself a copy to make sure in case my boyfriend forgot to get me one for Christmas. And I'll just quickly go through. He organizes it into three major chapters, such as process, where he teaches us how to char, brown, infuse, and age. And then pairing, and the recipes involve sweetness, fat, acidity, and chile heat. Then produce, where he focuses on mushrooms, my favorite vegetarian meat substitute. Alliums, which hurt my tummy. Sorry, onions, I love you. Nuts and seeds, sugar, fruit, and our favorite booze. Yeah. And there's an entire section on flavor bombs. I love, love, love this cookbook. Yeah. So thank you for writing it, Yotam. Yeah, it's a be- I remember you lent me that cookbook and I was just astounded by the photos themselves. They're just amazing. Holy yeah. man. Yeah. Cool book for sure. The next celebrity chef that I want to talk about is Nikki Nakayama. She is a Japanese American chef. And she's the owner of Michelin starred N-Naka restaurant in L.A. And she specializes in modern Japanese kaiseki cuisine. So I think I've actually experienced this when I went to when I went to Mount Fuji. Sorry, I don't mean to make anybody jealous. I promise. I am (laughs) very jealous. I I, I did not know what I was. I did not realize this is what I was getting. But it's like a multi-course Japanese meal. It's very fancy and super artistic. It's just so beautiful to see. And doesn't it take up so many like little plates? Like they're doing the dishes for hours after the meal because everything comes on a tiny plate. (laughs) Yes. And there's so many like little things too. Like it's not just little plates. There's like little tiny bites that have, they're full of flavor. It's really amazing. Unfortunately, Nikki Nakayama has not written a cookbook before. But there's this really, really cute, and I had to include this because it's so, so cute. It's a Nikki Nakayama, A Chef's Tale in 13 Bites book. It's a little picture book for kids that come it that ranges four to eight years old. Mm-hmm. And it's, oh, man. So if you look on Amazon, definitely do that. And you can see, like, little photos inside. It's all illustrated. It's adorable. You get to learn about her and her life and what it was like growing up in these food-oriented places, of course, like her home. This is where, you know, it all started. And it's just really cute, and I had to include it. If you want to learn more also about Nikki Nakayama, she's featured on the first season of Netflix's documentary series Chef's Table. So you get to learn even more about her. She's cool. I, I really wish she had a cookbook. So that's one person I wanted to showcase today. Well, I want to chat about David Burtka. He's an American actor and a professional chef. He's known for his acting roles in theater and television shows since is one of my favorites, How I Met Your Mother, oh. and the play about the baby, which I've never heard of. No. So after his role on How I Met Your Mother, he gained media attention for dating Neil Patrick Harris, and they later got married in 2014. Yeah. Ah, I... 
am going to chat about his cookbook, which is called Life is a Party, Deliciously Doable Recipes to Make Every Day a Celebration. And I actually had this checked out from the library a month ago, and I got busy, and I meant to do a cookbook look-through and a reel on Instagram. And I was going to do a video review of it. And then the library was like, um, we need this book back right now. And so I had to take it back. Oh, no. So let's peek inside, courtesy of Amazon's preview service. Explore the contents. Ooh, he has it divided by seasons. I love that. Oh, cool. For spring, yeah. he presents a dig-in brunch, a thank you dinner, a holy holiday, and a Mexican fiesta. Excuse me, Mexican fiesta. In summer, he presents a summer picnic, a fancy queue, summer solstice, Sunday fun day. Isn't every day Sunday fun day? Right. And then fall is a harvest party, pumpkin carving brunch. I've thrown one of those before. It's very messy. A fright night, give thanks for leftovers. And winter is snow day, New Year's fresh start brunch and game night. I love it. That's cute. I totally want to get this back from the library and look through it. That's yeah. Life is a Party by David Burtka. The next person that I want to talk about, because we can't not talk about Anthony Porosky. We most, most of us know him from Queer Eye. He's one of my favorites. I love him so much. Do you watch Queer Eye 2, Carrie, or no? I watched it back in the day when it started, and I submitted my friend Chris, who's a red-headed, fire-breathing clown magician. And I thought for sure they would make him over because, frankly, he needs some help. But they passed it up. I was very devastated. You should try it again. You should try it again. (laughs) I love it. It's such a feel-good show if you've never watched it before. They're just... Yeah, if you need, like, a feel-good show, this is something you should watch. But Antony is the one that does all of the culinary stuff in the show and tries to encourage people to eat healthier. Just not necessarily healthier, but better and taking care of yourself and just learning how to cook, cook for yourself or your friends and whatnot. And I believe he's coming out with a cookbook sometime later this year or yes, he is. It's called Anthony. Let's do dinner. It comes out September of this year. That's so exciting. I'm so excited. Okay. It's really cute. Okay. Uh, calm down a little I'm, bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I love the photos in here. They're very modern and bright He has a plethora of different flavors that he utilizes in his cooking. So an example of some of the recipes are like a miso noodle soup. And Mm. usually when I think of miso soup, it's like a side. This is a main soup. It's very filling looking and healthy. He has a sheet pan chicken with rosemary and grapes. Beautiful photo for that. There's also shrimp and chorizo paella in quotes. Because it's less on the the rice and a lot on the meat and the the peppers and stuff. It's, yeah, this is a really cool, fun cookbook. And it's not, you know, health driven necessarily, but it's it's obviously some things are healthy and they're just very flavorful and fun. And I, yeah, I just really love, I love Anthony. He's awesome. I wish I could meet him someday, but. So that's you never his, know. I know that would be so cool. Anyway, so that cookbook is Anthony. Let's do dinner. Comes out September fourteen. My next chef that we want to showcase is Deborah Van Tries, and I think I've only heard of her because she was interviewed on a cooking podcast I was listening to. Mm. So I'm going to summarize Atlanta Magazine's blurb about her. She's a longtime flight attendant, and she started culinary school in the wake of a worker strike that left her feeling kind of vulnerable about her career. She was one of the few Art Institute of Atlanta students with no professional experience, and she had a baby at home, but she still graduated at the top of her class. Woohoo! Yeah. Her first restaurant was in the 90s in the East Atlanta Village, and it was a Definitely a DIY thing going on. She had chairs collected from the curbs and wall murals that one of the neighbors painted for her. And she expanded the boundaries of soul food, which is the cooking that she was raised on. So her cookbook is just came out in March. The Twisted Soul Cookbook, Modern Soul Food with Global Flavors. And I want to take a peek inside this because we didn't look through this on camera yet. Table of Contents. Ooh, chapter one, cast-offs and throwaways. Chapter two, beef, lamb, and pork. Chapter three, poultry. Then she moves on to vegetables, salads, and sides, which be 
would be the chapter I would begin with as a vegetarian. Then I would skip chapter five, shellfish and fish, and then chapter six, desserts. And chapter seven is necessities, but I would call desserts necessities. That was just me. Agree. <laughs> and it's supposedly a gorgeous cookbook with vibrant photography. There's a hundred fresh salads and side dishes and brilliant pantry staples to enhance everyday cooking, including dressings, relishes, and sauces. I'm not making my own dressings, but I appreciate that she put that option in there for people that have more time than I do. That's the Twisted Soul Cookbook, Modern Soul Food with Global Flavors by Deborah Van Trees. My next cook is Lazarus Lynch. He is an African-American entrepreneur, author, magician, or you said magician earlier, I don't mean magician, <laughs> musician, multimedia host, and he's the face of Son of a Southern Chef, and that's a cookbook that came out in 2016. He also is a two-time Chopped champion, and he was, this is interesting, and I wish that I was on Snapchat to to have at least experienced this firsthand, but he was Snapchat Snapchat's first ever cooking show called Chopped You. He also has a Food Network digital series called Comfort Nation. I mean, seriously, this Ooh. guy's amazing. So cool. He also has a YouTube channel that you'll... Uh, I'll post that in the show notes, too, if you want to go check some of his stuff out in him, because he's a character. He's awesome. In this cookbook, though, Son of a Southern Chef, Cook with Soul... It's bright, it's fun. He's on the cover of it and he's like biting into a shrimp and it's just, he's like having a lot of fun with it. Some of the recipes included in this cookbook are Sriracha honey wings. We have corn and green onion fritters. Oh, those <gasps> Whoa. look so good. And the colors, it's not just a plate of food. For a lot of these recipes, you'll see these really Bright table settings, bright illustrations, some extra tips and tricks that are all highlighted. It's a very fun cookbook and very funky. There, another, okay, I have to talk about the shrimp and crazy creamy cheddar grits because this looks so good. I'm really That hungry. sounds so good. I just had breakfast, but now I'm like, I could have a second breakfast if you would make me cheesy grits. Oh, so good. Yeah, and this looks really great. It showcases him and... Him cooking, you know, him cooking on a grill and everywhere and just kind of being himself in the city. And it's just really fun. I really enjoy this cookbook. It's Son of a Southern Chef, Cook with Soul. It's by Lazarus Lynch. Our next chef we want to focus on while we're celebrating LGBTQ chefs is the famous, famous Julia Tertian. Yeah. She has been all over the internet and podcasts especially since her cookbook came out on March 2nd called Simply Julia. She's an American best-selling cookbook author, a food writer, a cook, a food equity advocate, and she has a podcast called Keep Calm and Cook On, which I have not listened to yet because there's so many awesome podcasts and they're they're building up on my phone and we're part of the problem too. We're adding more. Ha <laughs> ha. She's published four solo cookbooks and she's contributed to so many others. And often I'm sitting down to do a cookbook look through for YouTube and I'm like, oh, and this is co author's Julia Tertian. <laughs> <laughs> so her Simply Julia cookbook is 110 easy recipes for healthy comfort food. Thank you. Thank you. I will be whipping this out at probably November for our October this year when I start cooking again. Her Chapters in this cookbook are 11 weeknight go-tos, 11 make-ahead mains, 11, this must be her lucky number, vegan one-pot meals for everyone, and then 11 chicken recipes, 11 grape soups and stews, and I love making soups and stews all fall and winter long, Yeah. 11 go-to sides, 11 salad dressings, easy sauces and relishes. Why does everyone want us to make our own salad dressings lately? Jeez, okay, fine. 11 favorite breakfasts, and then... A chapter called 10 Noshes and a Drink, oh and 11 Memorable Sweets. <laughs> that is Simply Julia, 110 Easy Recipes for Healthy Comfort Food by Julia Tertian. Cute. My next person is Ruby Tando. I knew her as one of the finalists on the great 
British Bake Off. Yeah, one of my favorites. I really, really liked her, and I was sad to see how much flack she got on social media. It was really unnecessary and awful. But that was too much drama. Yeah, was so much. She didn't deserve that at all. But um, she is also an author and a journalist. She's written for the Guardian, Elle, and Vice, and she's published two cookery books one that i think she published right after the great british bake-off was crumb and flavor which is did really really well she also has a new cookbook that is supposed to come out in october of this year it's called cook as you are recipes for real life hungry cooks and messy kitchens the thing i'm seeing though on amazon is one it's it seems like it's only on kindle but it might not be. They might update it as the year, you know, as the year progresses. I know things have been really crazy in the cookbook publishing world. So it's possible they just haven't caught up or, or they don't want to commit too much to a date. So I, for this cookbook, it has over 100 awesome recipes. And they're not just bakes. So I really appreciate that. And she acknowledges the fact that, you know, a lot of us are home cooks, obviously. And we're juggling yeah. like long commutes we have children we have things to do we're super busy and we demanding pets i have to add (laughs) oh my goodness don't get me started yes we both have demanding pets fur babies but uh so a lot of us tend to just plan things on the fly and we might have limited resources or limited time so her cookbook is geared for people that you know for normal people and it's so that we can learn how to make easy one pot dinners or no chop recipes. No chop should be a whole cookbook section. Oh, I would thank love you. no oh. chop. Holy moly. Some of the recipes that she's included in here. Oh, I'm already dying. Salted malted magic ice cream. Oh, no. Uh, mm. She also has one tin smashed potatoes with lemony sardines and pesto. That's interesting. She also has a whole dinner. So it sounds like there's not, it's not just individual recipes and then you can piecemeal a whole meal together. She has a a whole thing for a dinner that's like plantain, black beans, and Eden rice as your whole dinner meal. I love that. I think that's really helpful, especially for us that are super busy like myself. But I really love her, and I wanted to mention her because I just think she's awesome, and her cookbooks are really cool, and I can't wait to see if this cookbook does come out this year, and I hope we get a hard copy, and it's not just a Kindle. So that's Cook As You Are, Recipes for Real Life, Hungry Cooks, and Messy Kitchens, Hooray, by Ruby Tando. Next, we wanted to encourage you to enjoy a few cocktails worth cooking from some of these cookbooks with this cocktail book. It's called Queer Cocktails. 50 Cocktail Recipes Celebrating Gay Icons and Queer Culture by Louis Laney. It came out March 9, and I can't believe I didn't look through this on YouTube yet. I've got to. It sounds so fun. The chapters include simple sugar syrup, the cocktails such as a Bloody Mariah, (laughs) a Green Fairy, Prima Donna, Summer Garden, a classic champagne cocktail, A Harvey wall banger, I don't even want to know who's banging which wall. (laughs) A smoking president, a club Tropicana, orange daiquiri, a stiletto, a Martinez, a tequila queen, death in the afternoon, a ruby slipper spritzer, rocket man, naked and famous, and a pride morning mimosa, and a rainbow sangria. Okay, that's it. (gasps) Rainbow sangria. I am so there. Yes. Recipes were inspired by Beyonce, Freddie Mercury, Whitney Houston, plenty of other... Oh, Stephen Fry Martini. Love this. That is Queer Cocktails, 50 Cocktail Recipes Celebrating Gay Icons in Queer Culture by Louis Laney. I love it, love it, love it. Me too. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's mini-sode, and happy Pride! To hear happy Pride! Mo- yeah, <laughs> to hear more cookbooks... Stay tuned every Tuesdays and Friday for more episodes. Make sure to share and subscribe so other cookbook collectors can find us. If you want to learn about more cookbook news, come on over to our Facebook. We're on Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest at Cookbook Divas. We also have a website blog at cookbookdivas.com where we write about more cookbooks. 
Thank you again for listening and happy cooking and happy pride.